arm out. All right, the achievement pressure looks good. Top right now. Water towers can fly! Yes! Yeah. Yikes. You bet. Okay. We don't need any more of these. All right, folks, you know the drill. It's time for another NASA space flight live stream here. You should now hear the sound of my voice, and you should also see on the screen a big white tube filled with explosives. Remember the space shuttle, right? Anybody remember that thing that would like go into space and it had the space plane, the black and white thing with the orange tank? Then there were two white things on the side of it that would like provide 90% of the lift, at the thrust at liftoff. Same thing here, they made another one a little bit longer, five segments instead of four. This is supposed to support SLS, and it is Northrop Grumman out in Utah testing this today. They had a little bit of a hold there, 10 minutes. We held our stream for 10 minutes as well, but we have a live camera out there via Mr. Jack Byer, and we are going to be doing some commentary for the test that should be firing off now in less than 30 minutes. We got a lot of five by fives in chat now. All right, so let's introduce some other people here with me, starting off with, speaking of white things trapped to the side of space shuttles, Mr. Chris Bergen. Chris, do we have you on comms? Did somebody mention shuttle? Somebody mentioned... I figured you were just going to jump right in as soon as I said, remember the space shuttle? No, because that had been rude, and you'd have shouted at me, and Michael would have shouted at me, and it's not worth it. <laughs> it's very important to get this right. By the way, this let's, a bit, let's make a big distinction here. The shuttle booster was four segments. This is five segments. You got an extra segment of fun. Uh -huh. uh, did you say an extra segment of fun? Yes. Nice. <laughs> 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 All right. Y'all know Chris Bergen. You hear his voice on the stream quite often. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. And then also here on comms, we've got Mr. Chris Gebhardt. Apparently something is attracting the shuttle huggers today. Well, you know, I'll add to what Chris said when you said you expected us to jump right in. I mean, that would have blown the surprise. <laughs> I mean, how, 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 how could the two Chris's not be yeah. here, like, when the shuttle booster is being tested? <laughs> nice. So what's going on? I mean, we see a booster out there. It seems to be laying on the ground sidewards. What, what are we expecting today, y'all? Yeah, so uh, if you are all familiar with those things that we sometimes refer to as static fires, you know, when something's vertical on a pad and you light engines and you fire them off for a few seconds and then shut them down and just make sure everything's going. I mean, I think there's a rocket or a couple out there that do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is, uh, sorry, joking aside, this is the exact same thing as what we see at Starbase with the star with starships and what we see at the launch sites when Falcon 9s do their static fires, except this is how you static fire a solid rocket booster. Um, you generally lay them down on their sides like this. They're just easier to handle that way with, with the segments and the weight and the mass that goes into this. So this is a solid rocket booster for the SLS program. It is fully, fully, fully fueled, just like the ones on Artemis 1 are right now. And what they're going to do is fire it. And it is a full duration hold down static fire. Uh, so this booster will fire for just over two minutes, producing upwards of 3.3, 3.5 million pounds of thrust as it really peaks out there Um during its thrust profile. And the reason for this is they need to continue to test them so that they understand that quality control through the regular production process is being maintained. So this booster was built the exact same way that the SLS solid rocket boosters are. So they're getting good data on the process of their quality control as well. But this is also the way you test new components for a solid rocket booster. So in particular today, they are testing a new motor ignition system, a, a new ablative nozzle lining. So the nozzle at the end that steers all that thrust and everything and, and, 
and gets the booster to have the control that it needs to control the vehicle as it ascends. Um, that is being tested. A new cooling ablative nozzle is being tested and also new elements of the thrust vector control system, the actual system that moves that nozzle at the bottom of the booster um, are being tested. That last one for the new thrust vector control is actually something that's being tested for the boosters that will replace the ones that will fly on Artemis 1 through 8. Um, and then they'll switch to a new version of the solid rocket boosters called Booster Obsolescence Life Extension, or BOLE, and those will switch to electric thrust vector control systems. So this is the first test that is examining some of those, uh, whereas the nozzle lining and the motor ignition system will actually be incorporated on Artemis boosters prior to Artemis 9 and the Bole flights. So that is what we are expecting here today. And Chris, I think you have a favorite part of this test too, which is basically how it obliterates the mountain behind it. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the thing about this test is what I always find fascinating is it's actually anchored deep into the mountain. And that's not even an exaggeration, it really is. I remember um, previously when it was by ATK were the company who were basically the responsible for these tests. They said they bury the anchors deep into the mountain so that when 22 million horsepower comes out of the aft end and obliterates the side of the mountain, everything stays where it should be. But it, it's absolutely fascinating how that test stand is built. It really is anchored down. And the two supports you see added in the middle there, they were a recent addition. It was originally just one. And they added a second one because they found that the booster, they wanted to keep it stable during ignition. It literally was starting to bounce a little bit. So can you imagine um, a failure of a test booster like this? It would be dramatic to say the least. But thankfully, it is now completely secured down for these tests. And they've had experience with the five segments now. Y'all, real quick, I was I was setting up a thing because I wanted to illustrate something to you. We have the live feed, like I mentioned earlier, because of Jack Byer, who is crazy. But Jack is our kind of crazy. Last night, Jack drove almost 12 hours from L.A., his normal abode, all the way out to Utah. This isn't like, oh, let's hop over to Mojave or something like that. It was a 12-hour drive, almost 800 miles for Jack to drive all the way out to Utah to bring this sort of, bring this video to us. So let's give a massive thanks to Jack and help him fill up his gas tank, hopefully. Uh, massive, massive thanks for Jack undergoing this massive drive to get all the way out there so that we could bring the live stream here to y'all today. I had to. That's what I was setting up. I was literally like, okay, L.A. to Utah, and, and how long is that? And that's when I figured out it was this many miles. So, I, Jack. I drive I have done myself, actually, and that is a long drive. So, yeah, many thanks to Jack for, for hauling it all out there to bring us this today. Yeah, and I do believe we have another name that you haven't heard before. Uh, one of our writers is actually out there as well, aren't they, Chris or Chris? Yes, indeed. Uh, Justin, uh, Justin uh, Babinski is out there for us. Uh, or Justin Davenport, sorry. Babinski is his Twitter handle. That's <laughs> yeah. why I said that. There we go. I uh, Justin, I get all the just, time. <laughs> yeah, J Justin Davenport, uh, one of our writers, is out there as well. Um, and he has been out there uh, a couple of times before for some of these booster tests. But I believe this is Mr. Jack's first time out there for one of these wonderful firings. That's awesome. I've always wanted to see one of these in person. Uh, a funny story from my Twitch stream is I used to cover it with just whatever NASA would give us, right? So NASA's YouTube thing, and we didn't have our own camera out there, and we just bring up the NASA stream and then talk over it on Twitch, right? And at one of these booster tests, in the background of the official NASA stream, there was someone obviously trying to get on camera, and they were wearing one of my shirts from my Twitch stream. <laughs> And they were like ah. pointing at their shirt, like waving it behind the official NASA host that was talking. And all of a sudden my Twitch chat was like, oh my gosh, he's wearing a Major League Rocket Science shirt. And somebody went out there to see the test just to try and get on the screen and like, or while they were there, tried to get on the camera and show that they had on one of our shirts. So anyways, I've always wanted to go out there and see one of these. And I'm so happy that uh, Jack and Justin were both able to make it out and share this with us today. In Indeed. Indeed, and uh, it's going to be 
one heck of an impressive test, let me tell you. These things really do look insane when they are fired, um, like we are going to see them a little later on here. Uh, but I know we have a lot of questions that we want to um, that we want to get to, so I am ready to dive right in if the rest of y'all are. Yep. Yeah. All righty. All right, so first I want to start with, start with Josh... Uh, Who's uh, fifty dollar super chat saying everyone to remember to blow toward the west at T zero to counteract the thrust so we don't speed up the Earth's rotation. <laughs> <laughs> I like that joke. Here's a little extra money so Jack and Justin can swing by Maddox for a steak afterward. Enjoy. Well, that's apparently a local who knows nice. the area. So there we go. Um, and if you're in Utah and you hear a loud rumble in about uh, twenty minutes, don't worry. It's just a space rocket being tested. <laughs> um, but here is a really, uh, so here's a really good question that we've got from uh, Matt Hancock, who's asking, uh, how much burn time does each segment represent? And that's a very good question, because burn time is not actually dictated by how many segments there are. So even though this is a five segment over a four segment, burn time is the same as it was on the solid uh, on the space shuttle for the solid rocket motors uh because what actually dictates the burn time is the diameter and the amount of propellant that gets packed in there and that is more or less the same uh for sls so the extra segment is actually for added thrust um for the rocket booster so these five segment solids actually produce slightly more thrust than their four segment shuttle counterparts and that's where the main difference comes in in terms of upsizing it for the sls rocket uh oh boy so chris we're getting a lot of questions here and i think i'm going to throw this one to you we're getting a lot of questions about are these reusable oh no that's a good question unfortunately i promised thomas i would not be derogatory towards Aries, but I'm going to have to be now <laughs> for factual reasons, because there's a lot, yeah. this is going to be a long answer, by the way. So if you want to take a coffee break, now's the time because the shuttle boost is used to come back on the parachute and we're recovered and turned back, back to Port Canaveral, <laughs> not unlike the boosters, but not on a drone ship and then taken apart and examined. And now those examinations would play parts into what was called a post-flight IFA, which is in-flight anomaly report. It doesn't mean it was anomalies, it just means that's the report they use if they find any. And the boosts that came back in the latter missions of the Space Shuttle program were very, very clean. They were finding, like, the smallest amount of grease on a place that shouldn't be there, and very minor things. But they were able to get those investigations because they got the booster back. And that was an important consideration for reusability, not just reusing the cases as the case, as the case was be, <laughs> pun intended, but it was also to do the examinations. They will not have that with SLS because they deleted the parachute system. They deleted it because Ares 1 was unable to provide, sorry, Ares 1 booster, the five segment booster, was unable to provide enough thrust to launch Orion into low Earth orbit to the ISS, which is original missions for Orion before going to lunar orbit. That was a problem. So they had to lose mass. They did what was called a mass saving exercise, zero base vehicle on Orion to reduce the mass of Orion to help out the booster. And then they also deleted the recovery systems from the booster. They did not bring it back for SLS, which was a bit of a question why I didn't do that, because SLS has no problem with thrust. It has no problem with up mass. It can completely have the parachute system in there for recoverability, but they'd already deleted it from Ares. So that is why there is no parachute system on the SLS booster. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and and to sort of get around that, a lot of the information that they used to get from um, from breakdown inspections is now there. Are no, there's a lot more sensors on these boosters, and a lot of that is just going to be transmitted to the ground during flight, and that's how they're going to still sort of understand the health of the joints. But tests like these are actually another really important way that they, um, especially when you don't recover the solid rockets, that you still maintain that level of safety understanding of what the field joints are doing because as we as a lot of us remember and for those of you who don't you know it was a failure of the o-ring seal um and the temperatures on the day that led to the loss of the challenger seven crew members uh on on january 20th 1986 and since then we have not had burn throughs of any of the joints on the solid rocket boosters and, and they have taken great care to make sure of that and one of the reasons for these tests is exactly that um maintaining that level of safety 
which actually does come to a question that we have here um, in chat, which was during one of the previous um, test firings here, they actually cooled the booster down. Did they do that today? Which is an excellent question. And the answer is no, they did not do that today, but you are correct. They did it with the previous static firing. So today is what is known as flight support booster two. And it's basically, okay, this is the design that was certified to fly and we're just testing our quality control processes and testing new little things that we're going to upgrade along the way with new technology, right? But flight support, so this one today, flight support booster two is being tested just at whatever temperature it's at right now out in the Utah sun. That's what it's being tested at. But, F, uh, but, but flight support booster one, um, a couple of years ago was actually tested at 15.5 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So they cooled it down so that they could see how those joints were reacting in the colder temperatures. So they do have the ability to modulate the temperature of the booster and the propellant to test within its operational temperature range what it's actually going to perform at. So great question there. Excellent. Hey, Real quick, let me grab a couple of these super chats yeah. that are coming in. <clears throat> Musical Wolf says, after the test, does the booster weigh less than before the test? I think, yes, huh. the booster weighs a lot less after the test. I yes, can actually uh, give a little bit of an answer to that, by the oh, way, yeah. because people wonder what's inside this booster, what the solid propellant look like. It's amazing. We've seen very few photographs because it's all proprietary stuff, but it's like a cake mix. They literally pour in what looks like a cement cake mix into these boosters with a mandle down the middle of it to provide the actual thrust dynamics of what the shape will look like once it's set. But it literally is like throwing cake mix into a big tin. And that's how they make the segments. And then they bond them and then they join them. And that's when you get the solid booster from. Yeah, they, they let it like cure. It's literally something you pour yeah. in and then it like cures in a specific grain pattern and shape and that sort of thing. It, it, that's really cool. It's like cake mix. I never thought of it that way. Uh, and that and that bore that you just said is how you control the thrust of a solid rocket and uh, how you yes. throttle it during flight. Yes, the amount of surface area that's currently sort of reacting, I guess, is the right way to say it. Can control how much thrust you get over time, and you can change the burned surface area over time to change the amount of thrust you get. Roughly, roughly. Um, let's see here. Here's another one from Musical Wolves, and y'all, just so you know, we're about 12 minutes away from the expected T zero of this Ooh. test. Should be at 10 minutes after the hour out there in Promontory, Utah. Uh, Musical Wolves asked, what happens to the solid propellant once it's burned? Does it stay in the booster or does it come out? Like, is it just uh, a big empty tube at the end of the test? Yes. Yes, yes it is. It is ah. a big empty tube. What happens to it? It's the flame you see coming out the back end. That's exactly yeah. what happens to it. It is burned to completion. Excellent. I mean, excellent. I mean, yeah, it creates thrust and it pushes rockets into space, which is which is excellent. But uh, very good question there, Musical Wolves. Let's By the way, here. I'm going to quickly interject. I'm going to put a link into chat to show what the mix looks like. And trust me, it looks like cake mix to me. <laughs> nice. That's in uh, the, U the YouTube chat, right? Yes. Oh, I can actually cool. send it to the control panel if you want. <laughs> oh, sorry. I should have thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> like a, oh, yeah. Like a, there it is, Goss. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like and, a toilet know. seat. <laughs> a little bit. The heck? That's how to mix it. It's a mixing bowl. I'm like making sure that what you're sending me is shaped to show on the screen, Chris. It is. Ah! <laughs> this, is this is like uh, L2 content, I guess. Yeah, I, no, I've made it into an article no? so you can use it. Oh, good. oh. So, so look here. This is what Chris was showing me. The link that he put in the chat. That is actually some of the propellant when it's in sort of quasi liquid form, I guess, cake batter form before it's cured out inside a uh, inside the booster, right? But don't lick that spoon. <laughs> it's a forbidden snack, Jack says. Yes. <laughs> nice. It's a forbidden snack. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for that, Chris. I'd never seen that before. That's really cool. Uh, let's see here. Spatial Discovery says, am best shuttle. Sorry. Oh, I shouldn't have read that one. Sorry, Space Shuttle no. Discovery. Goodbye. Thank <clears> you for the support. <throat> um, Aravel says, what are everyone's favorite sandwiches? Mine is SLS. Is it like a... <laughs> Like a sandwich, lettuce sandwich, or something. I don't know. Uh, Arvel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Yehuda Burger. Is this the second test for this type of booster? Have they fired one like this before? Great question. So while this is flight support booster two, meaning it's the second one of the flight supports, same processes, completely used for SLS. 
not the first time. There were also several qualification and demonstration motor firings of the five segment booster prior to the flight support test. So it basically goes, we're designing it, demonstration firing. Now we're qualifying it for flight, qualification firings. Now we're just maintaining flight status, flight support booster. That's gotcha. sort of the three categories of firings that they have for these things. And I think, uh, like Jack was saying earlier, this is a qualification firing, or a, a, like, what was no. it about the igniters? Yeah, so no, it's technically a flight support booster, but what they're testing is already qualified new motor ignition systems and new ablative nozzle lining. So basically that second one, new ablative nozzle lining, is just how to keep the nozzle from melting. Um, and But basically those two things have already been qualified for flight. We're just testing them now in flight configuration basically to make sure and then it's the new thrust vector controls the actual controls that will steer that nozzle at the end is the qualification part at least how it was described to me but jack is actually saying that this is slightly different than what came out to the media but they had a subject matter expert briefing them there on the ground that said the igniter is also being qualified today too um Gotcha. So, slight difference there, but we'll go with what the SME says. So qualifying the new motor igniter and the thrust vector control systems. Gotcha. So it's like they, they made a couple of them, and then they're testing this igniter to make sure that that stack they made, the group or lot that they made, is good to go. And if this one works fine, then they can say, those other two we made out of the same batch should also be fine, if I sort of summarize that poorly. I think you got it correctly. And yeah, yeah, Jack is confirming that the subject matter expert was saying that this qualifies the A3 igniter, basically. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. I think eight, is that Artemis three? Ah, I think that, no, yeah. but I like that. <laughs> I don't know. Does it, is that our Artemis three's igniter? A3's yeah, yeah. igniter? Like alpha three? I'm not sure. Um, also, I've got, I've got a quick point to make on how they check the booster after these tests to, to make sure everything has gone this plan to qualify these elements. And that is, you'll see a CO2 extinguisher on a robot arm move in just after it flames out, just after the thrust down. And that literally puts out as much fire as possible so that when they've completed the test, they can get the components at the point the booster shut down without any subsequent fires that may occur because it's still obviously on the ground. When they were coming back after being expended in space, they'd come back down and put themselves out anyway. So that's how they do it on the ground with a CO2 extinguisher. Well, I think I've seen that before. It's like a fire extinguisher on a stick or something. Yep. It? Well, a robot arm. <laughs> a robot arm. Stick, yeah. robot arm, you know what's the difference. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can't grab a couple super ch All right, time out. We're trying to get an accurate T0 here so we know when this test is supposed to happen. So there's a little bit of confusion on exactly when the test is going to go. We were, it was supposed to be 1 o'clock, and then it was going to be one ten, and then it was going to be one something, and now it's one question mark. So give us just a second while we try yeah. to figure out the exact timing here. And actually, yeah, I can keep running uh, some questions and, ch and 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 support if we want to. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that, Chris. Yeah, well, right off the bat, Chris K, thank you so much for the one hundred dollar super chat. Just Chris saying, Chris K again. Yeah, Chris K again. Man, I also got to say, I can't wait to meet you in a week, Chris K. That's going to be fun. Um, uh, really, really can't wait to meet you. But yeah, thank you so much for that support. Saying for the Jack Car and Donut Fund and Coffee Fund. So Jack. Yeah. You've got some gas, coffee, and donut fun money. There we go. <laughs> uh, come on, but seriously, Chris, th thank you. Very much appreciated. Um, Brie with the five, uh, five euros. No, nothing, just five euros of support. Thank you so much. Uh, Jim Cavett saying, thanks, Jack. Uh, Rough Rider Show saying, mad respect for you, Jack. Drive in there to bring us this feed. I 100% agree. Mad, mad props and respect for you, Jack, on that. Uh, John saying, uh, gr glad to see my state get some space attention. Love from Utah. P.S. Thank you, Jack. Well, wonderful, John. Thank you so much for the support as well. Uh, Jesus Rodriguez is saying, is this going to affect the Fortnite update? Well, this is, this, <laughs> this, 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 is, this is where I become the Adrian of our stream. I don't play that, so I don't get that reference. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, but moving right along, uh, oh, Jesus, again, uh, thank you so much for becoming a Pad Rat member. Thank you. That ongoing support really means a lot to us. That 
that ongoing membership and monthly support, you know, that that is a large part of the reason why Jack can just drive 12 hours through the night and be in a completely different state at a completely different spaceport um, to to bring us this awesome, awesome test. So thank you so much, Jesus. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, all righty here. Got some other questions here. Uh, Jesse Paul is asking, what direction does it burn? Does it burn from the top down or the opposite? Actually, the answer is neither. It yeah, burns same. from the center core outward to the edge. When I first found out myself, that that really surprised me because I also thought it was literally like burning up the booster and just basically yep. spending that way. But no, it's it's literally the everything comes down the middle. If you can imagine that down the middle, and it burns out towards the outer diameter of the actual casings you see here. It's it's mad, really, when you think about it. But it it works. Can I try to draw that real quick? Do you all mind yeah, if have we a go, draw it, how it, yeah. it is amazing, really, when you first find out. And it's not something that's obvious. Uh, it's a very good yeah. question because it so, provides us the answer for it. Yeah, so check this out, y'all. Like, like, imagine you have an SRB, and it's not going to be, like, the scale or painted or anything like that, right? But imagine you have an SRB, and it's filled, like, to, if you fill it to the brim with the explosive cake batter or the fiery cake batter or the forbidden <laughs> snacks or whatever, like, imagine you just put it all the way up to the top, but you only lit this part, right? Like imagine the surface area of that circle on the back. It's only so much surface area, right? And so yep. you can burn that much propellant and you can make like a little bit of thrust out of the back of the thing. That's not what they do. It's not like a, a fire or a sparkler where just the end burns. What they do, and again, not drawing this to scale, they have basically a tunnel that goes all the way up the middle of the thing and it's like a huge open core. And what does that get you? Instead of just the surface area of the circle on the end, you get the surface area of the whole tunnel in the middle of it. And all around that tunnel, all the way up the entire booster, the, the ignition is happening, the chemical reaction is happening, and it's filling that tunnel with thrust, basically. And so instead of just that little circle at the end, you get to make this much surface area of thrust at once, and then you end up with a lot of thrust coming out of the back. So there's all sorts of tips and tricks, the way that they sort of shape it, and you can put little, like, rivel, you just, like little knobs and stuff in it and change the thrust over time or give it even more surface area by making it look like a, almost like a, like a pattern like this, like a flower sort of pattern in the middle and increase the surface area. But it's all about increasing the surface area so that you can react a lot of propellant at once and turn it into thrust that you send out the hole at the back. Did I get that then, right? Yes, you did. And here's the even more amazing and complicated part, right? So you always hear people say, oh, you can't turn them off. You can't throttle a solid rocket. Yes, you can throttle a solid rocket because that propellant bore down the center that you're talking about, Doss, right? Yep. If you give it a circle or you give it a star, right? That changes the surface area that you were just talking about. Yeah. So these boosters are actually designed to throttle down at max Q because some of the, um, because some of the, uh, the segments have the propellant bore shaped differently, which then shapes your overall thrust curve of the solid rocket. So you can throttle it. You just, have to plan that throttle from the casting point of the booster segments, but you yep. can throttle them. Like when you're when you're throttling a rocket engine, you're giving it less propellant, right? And in a liquid yeah. rocket engine, you're sort of like pouring less propellant in through the turbo pumps into the combustion chamber, and so you get less thrust. On a solid rocket motor, you give it less propellant by changing the amount of surface area of right. propellant that's reacting at one time. So you can throttle these things just because you did it in Kerbal, and it's like. Pfft! The entire time, then it's completely dead. Uh, real SRBs don't work that way, and it's a very complicated right. way that they can build these things and sort of pour the deadly cake batter or whatever you want to call it. It, the, it the is flaming cake batter. It is, and then I know people are probably wondering, like, so wait a minute, like, how do they make sure the thrust is the same coming out the back of them, right? Because you can, I, I think, overly simplistically think of it as, oh, well, if they use the same propellant, that that does it, right? Yes, but use the same propellant for corresponding mirrored segments. So like, if you think of that booster broken into its five segments, right, you have the aft segment on one booster and you would have an aft segment on the other. Those two aft segments use the exact same propellant batch. No exceptions. Ah. The aft center segment right above them likewise uses the exact same propellant batch, which might not be the same to the aft segment. 
but each segment uses the same batch as its mirror. And if you have to replace a segment, you then have to replace the mirror segment to ensure that the thrust is equal coming out of them. Ah. Uh, anyway, that wasn't part of the question like, that was asked, well, but there you go. Like <laughs> this is this is what happens when you ask us a question, Jesse Paul, like what direction does it burn? Then you get ten minutes of conversation about how an SRB works and how you can throttle it and how they pour the crane and the cake batter and all sorts of stuff into the middle of it. And I can oh. actually answer this next one too, really quickly too, because it's fascinating. Right? Yeah. Uh, so SFS Inverted wants to know, why do rockets separate the solid rocket boosters before they are fully burnt out? And there are two things I want to talk about here. SLS and Shuttle and Ariane 5 do not separate them before they burn out. Vega separates it after they burn out, and the Atlas and Delta separate them, and, and Vulcan will too, after they burn out. So just want to make that distinction real quick. But a the common reason... misconception, real quick, Chris, a common misconception yeah. is smoke coming out the back does not mean thrust is coming out the back or any exactly. real amount of Exactly. So just because you see the SRB is still sort of trailing a smoke behind them, they're probably they're definitely in some cases not making full thrust just because they're still smoking. So in some cases and they carry them down key. range. Yep, exactly right. Um, they carry them down range to like clear oil rigs. I think at Vandenberg sometimes. Yeah. And there's reasons that you well, release them sooner or later. And and here's the primary element to it. It depends on how the vehicle is actually built and what your separation systems are designed to handle and the mass of the empty booster. So right. the main reason that Delta and Atlas and, and, and Vega, or I'm going to take Delta and Atlas, carry them up and pop them off after they are fully burnt out is you do not want them thrusting when you separate them from those vehicles because the boosters are very small compared to, the, to their big brothers like this one. Uh, and Vega is all a single stack, so you need it to not have any thrust to properly separate the stages so you don't have reconnect. The reason you separate the, the shuttle and the SLS and the Ariane 5 boosters before their thrust is zero is you actually want that small amount of remaining thrust coming out the back of them to work in your favor when you fire the separation motors so they actually clear the vehicle and do not recontact it. So you want... SLS and Ariane 5 and the shuttle in the past to still be thrusting slightly out of those boosters so that when the separation motors fire and change their angle of thrust, they're actually pushing themselves away from the vehicle as well. Right. So y'all wanted Another to talk question about SRBs. That wasn't asked. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you wanted to talk about rocket boosters. Um, oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Uh, but Chris, I've got a question for you. If you, uh, uh, I know you're itching to it, and I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not trying to usurp this, this conversation. <laughs> no, no, it's no problem at all. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> uh, here's a good question for shuttle, and it leads into some design changes that there are for the SLS solid rockets. Yeah. Did the shuttle period, during the shuttle period, did any of the explosive hold down bolts on the solid rockets ever fail during a launch? And did the SRBs oh. have enough thrust? to shear a bolt if it didn't blow? Right. This is, uh, this is a very good question because, first of all, they never had a bolt fail. They had an issue with the hold down points where the frangible nut, which was exploded. Oh, I'm going to have to find some more pictures for Das because the nut is huge. The frangible oh nut, God, which was yeah. exploded, where we're not going to a carrier place safely to get away from the thrust because it could end up bouncing back and hitting the actual booster itself or the shuttle even worse. Uh, they had an issue with that, but they changed the design of that during shuttle, and that was no problem. I was told during those conversations, I asked them, I said, what happens if the bolts don't fire? And they said that the, the actual rocket is committed at T0 with the SRBs firing. There is no abort. Once they fire those solid rocket boosters, they're going. And what would happen is it'd rip, it'd rip off the aft skirt, and they would try desperately to get to an RTLS. In other words, that had been a bad day. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to try and find that nut because yeah. it's amazing. And, and when you say that, Chris, it, 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 it ripping off the aft skirt, because that is where your thrust vector control system is. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the solid rockets did a lot of the thrust vectoring and aiming and positioning and rolling and pitching of the vehicle as it ascended, um, <laughs> as it will do for SLS. And, and they fixed it for SLS by getting rid of those hold downs. So it's only actually bolted for SLS to the mobile launcher 
when it rolls out to the pad and rolls back and then they take the bolts out so it's just a pin that holds them in place so they have no explosive hold downs on sls anymore so they've they've fixed that issue for sls that's really quickly that's why originally it was so difficult to make space shuttles in kerbal because they didn't allow you to the, the SRBs in Kerbal couldn't actually gimbal, they couldn't thrust vector. Yeah. And the SRBs are supposed to be doing 90% ish of the thrust. It's like 80 or 90% at liftoff, but you had no vector control over that when you built your Kerbal shuttle. And so people were like, My shuttle flips out, why won't it flip out? Because you didn't have all that control authority that should come off the SRBs actively gimbling. And then when they released the new SRBs, they added the part module that allowed you to actually thrust vector the thing so that you could build shuttles and get some of your get a lot of your control control off the SRBs. Anyways, Kerbal tie-in. I've, <laughs> um, I've just put some pictures of the actual uh, bolt and the nut, which was exploded in half. There yeah. was eight of them around each of the boosters, and they'd be the same design for SLS. So it's very much the same thing. Literally, they had igniters through those holes either side of the nut that yep. would explode the frangible nut apart, and that's what released the booster from the actual mobile launch platform. And amazingly, that's what held the shuttle stack up on the launch pad during uh, before launch. It wasn't held down by any of the abonicles or anything like that. It was literally held in place with these nuts. And that's what kept it upright on the launch pad. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Like the two yep. holes in the side of the frangible nut yeah. are literally, they put explosives in there and they blow it apart like you see on the other side there. That's really cool. I've got that other one and, here too to show. And here was, the, here was the fascinating part. The command to blow those hold down bolts was sent three tenths of a second prior to the command to light the solid rockets. So when you watch the like slow motion engineering videos of what these things look like when they blew, you will see the puff as the bolt is actually separated. And then 0.3 seconds later, you will see the ignition of the solid rocket booster. And that was literally to allow, allow enough time for the two halves of the bolts to fall into their receptacles on the mobile launch platform so that they were not free flying and kicked up into the vehicle yeah. at solid rocket ignition. Like that yeah. is the intricacy of the timing that they had to root for all of that and nearly caused a massive issue on STS 112. Go read Rain Hale's blog on that. Um, or if they just keep delaying the test, we'll get to that eventually. <laughs> we'll get to that eventually. Oh, geez. <laughs> we're not going to be short on short stars if we're delayed. I trust me on that one. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. We, can, we can definitely fill the airtime if we're talking about SRPs and shuttles and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, let me grab um, a couple more super. Yeah, Chris. please do, Doss. I was just going to ask you that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, WRN Hokey asked, why aren't there more all solid powered rockets? It's mm. all solid. There's a couple like rockets that have there big are. solid stages, right? There, well, the Minotaur is all solid, actually. Right. Um, but then Vega, which is probably considered the next one, actually does have a, a cryogenic upper stage to it. Um, uh, but, um, why aren't there more all solid vehicles, uh, powered vehicles? Well, you do get a lot of bang for your buck um, and you can get into a fairly precise orbit, but you can't get into the precise enough orbit that you need uh, uh, that a lot of missions need over liquid fuel vehicles. So that's why they're primarily used as like, first stage augments like this one um, for SLS and for shuttle before this for Ariane five and Ariane six while they're, why they are used for the lower stages of Vega. Um, but they're also like in the age, honestly, in the age of, you know, how do you keep costs down? How do you keep costs down? How do you keep costs down? You can get the cost of a solid vehicle into range with others. Vega is a good example of that. Um, but it takes commonality with other systems to make that possible for Vega. And when you don't have those commonalities across systems, it begins to be a problem. Uh, in that regard. Uh, and in a lot of ways, it is just cheaper to go with uh, liquid fueled vehicles in their development, but, and, and then sort of reusing them becomes an issue because as the shuttle program saw and as SLS is continuing to show, getting these solid rockets back, breaking them down, reinspecting them, recasting them with propellant and getting them back to the launch site, it's actually a wash on cost. So you're not actually saving anything on gotcha. by reusing them. Yeah. <laughs> 
So many good questions, y'all. Uh, I'm going to keep trying to speed run some of these. There's yeah. no way we can get through all of them, but let me I see. I assure you that was a quick answer. <laughs> yeah, that was the quick three-minute answer. That's a good quick answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Uh, Keith Carson, next time Das can send me the remote cameras. I live less than an hour from the test range. Keith, I think for this one, you probably would have had to fight Jack for that privilege. Um, and he's got a beard. He really looks like he could hold his own. So uh, I appreciate the offer. And I don't know, maybe at some point you should go and check out one of these in person. Let's see here. Uh, Nathan Weiler says, mandatory NSF staff meeting with Fifth Element Rental Fund. Oh, nice. <laughs> Adrian's not here, unfortunately. We're, we some... are waiting to get Adrian in front of that movie. <laughs> some super chats so we can rent the Fifth Element. Thank you, Nathan, for the support. Jim Seibel, I'm going to go with, says, thanks for bringing this one to us. You guys rock. Jim, thank you so much for the $9.99. Y'all keep showing up, and we will keep showing you videos of cool rocket stuff. Bill Sparks says, keep on keeping on. We will, Bill. Like I said, y'all keep watching. Y'all keep on keeping on being part of the community here, and we will keep on keeping on with the live streams and all of the other coverage we do. Let's see, these boosters, this is from Tyler. A comment these boosters use dead cord style FTS similar to the shuttle booster, then will be modernized later on. Any speculation speculation on what style FTS will be used? So, what do we mean when we say that like dead cord style FTS, newer yeah, uh, FTS? Yeah, so b basically, this is just a detonation cord that runs down the side of the solid rocket booster casings along the cable tray raceway. And basically, that's the way you blow up a solid rocket booster if you absolutely needed to during a launch failure. It just splits the casing open right away, which eliminates the thrust. Everything just sort of burns harmlessly and falls into the ocean. Um, right. With whatever. I think and we've that, got an example of that, haven't we, as well? We've got an example of what you saw with the boosters after Challenger was lost. You saw yeah. the two boosters going off on their own, and the command was sent, and they just go poof, just went. Yep. Uh, yeah, and and that is the flight termination system that the boosters will use. Um, uh, there are no current plans that have been revealed for SLS to switch to an automated flight termination system, so it is still manual for SLS. Gotcha. All right, let's see here. This is a very explosives uh, theme today. We've got explosive cake <laughs> batter, explosive rope, explosive inside of frangible nuts. Uh, as it turns out, when you run an SRB, there is a lot of uh, explosives involved. Let's see here. CJ Howell, one day, three streams. This is why I'm a member. CJ, thank you for that. We are busy, busy juggling things, and uh, there is a lot going on, which is not something we're going to complain about. Thank you so much for being a part of all this. Jarmo Mendez, speaking of the membership program, has become a PadRap member. Jarmo, thank you for joining us here. And we've got uh, Liz McQuaid, $20. More for the Fifth Element Rental Fund. Multi <laughs> <laughs> pass. Rolling smiley faces. Nice. Super green, super green. And then we've <laughs> got one from Ty Gondaroga saying, Do you think they can make reusable explosive bolts? <laughs> Lol. I can listen to you all day, people. Love y'all from Bulgaria. Keep it up as always. Ty Gondaroga, thank you so much. Reusable explosive bolts. Oh, that's <laughs> are, 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 are those like self-sealing stem bolts? Kudos hey. to anyone who gets that reference. Yes. Quite, <laughs> got some. There's, there's actually a relevant discussion here because that's one of the reasons that SpaceX doesn't use a, a lot of, use explosive bolts on things like their fairings and stuff like that. Because right. they're trying to enable the rapid reuse, SpaceX was, I don't want to say the first provider, but one of SpaceX's big deals was not wanting to rely on explosive components like that because of the turnaround time to get those rockets flying again, right? Either I'm not uh, right or Chris got disconnected. No, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm like, right? I'm pretty sure what I'm saying no, is correct. So, so, sorry, the question actually took me by surprise because you were, yes. <laughs> I had nothing more to add. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Leave me hanging there. Um, let's see here. And then last one from Dakota O'Neill with some Canadian dollars, thirteen ninety nine. Dakota O'Neill, thank you so much for helping us keep Jack's vehicle fueled that he could make it all the way out to Utah to bring us this event. Like that. Indeed. See, look. <laughs> the end of where Jack is. The, the <laughs> line goes almost all the way up to where Jack is watching right now. And then here is where the actual test is. You know how you can tell? Because the hill is sort of 
blown apart to the side yeah. of it there. Let's like, say, I'll zoom yeah. in real quick. Let's see. The here. road does not exist between yeah. either side of where that goes. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can tell this is a rocket test facility because of the way that it is. Like the hill has definitely felt a few tests there. It has indeed. All right, and we we uh, keep keep giving us your questions. I am truly, truly loving all of the questions that I'm seeing coming in. We've got a queue that's really long, but we're 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 getting through them as fast as we can. But keep them coming. Uh, I promise you, if we haven't gotten to it, we we we've got it in our queue. Gotcha, gotcha. But I, I do want to touch on one that I'm seeing quite a bit of actually, um, which I think is actually kind of interesting. Um, lots of people in chat are asking. Are they going to destroy the flag? Um, and no, they will not destroy the flag. Um, not the flag that is either painted onto the side of the booster that we see there or the flag that is flying in the breeze. It is a perspective illusion and angle illusion that the booster is aimed toward the flag. The flags will be fine. <laughs> Chris, I thought it was going to be like, you know that meme picture of the guy in the hurricane in the middle of the street with the American flag? And it's like, yes, it's da, 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 da. It would be yeah. like that with fire. That's what I was going to tell people. But I, I took it a step further. I thought yeah. I was hoping they didn't want to have a PR picture of an American flag on fire. <laughs> that would be really bad. Flag. See, I think it would be really difficult to get a picture of an American flag on fire unless you had a ridiculously high-speed camera back there. <laughs> oh, my it gosh, yes. Right in the nozzle, you wouldn't see anything. It would be flag, and then you wouldn't see anything except a huge flash, and then there would be an empty white tube later. Well, I was going to say, there would probably be, like, a frame of white. <laughs> One frame of white, <laughs> yeah. nice. Yeah, <laughs> as you do. By the oh, way, but, uh, can I just interject again one more yeah, second? There's course. actually a plug on the end of the booster, which is what's ah, like weather seal. And yeah. the slow motion cameras, which you just mentioned there, they do have slow, slow motion cameras. And you see, basically, the ignition is not fire. It's actually chunks of this insulation firing off before ah. the flame arrives in <laughs> the view of the high-speed cameras. It's amazing. I will find you a clip, Naz, trust me. Yeah. That's, that oh, oh definitely... that's actually really cool. Yeah. 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 The uh, weather actually, plug. I think that's in our article. In. Actually, Chris, it's in our article. It's oh, in the article okay, okay. on this test flight. Yes. I sorry, gosh, I even blinked on that too and it I is, edited yes, it. Of it is. Like, I, <laughs> yes. If you want to read about this test, nasaspaceflight.com. <laughs> um but yes, but maybe maybe we should talk a little bit about what we see here too, because I am getting some questions too in chat um saying uh uh, basically asking about the timing for this one and what is RT0. And we are actually, if I have not missed a chat in our back channel, um, we do not yet know a new T0. There were some communication issues that they were dealing with um, and they needed to get a couple things back before they could proceed with the test. So we're waiting uh, for that T0. So in the meantime, we're taking your questions um, T0 was originally supposed to be about 28 minutes ago. Then it got delayed to about 1.10 p.m. Mountain Time. And now we're just waiting for that new T0 uh, hey, time for when me? they will fire this. Yes, Jack. Hey, Jack. Yes, I heard that. Yes, hello. We heard Jack for a second. Yeah, so they have, they have a set of cameras on the south side of the booster. They lost power to those cameras. They are currently determining if they can get uh, power back to those cameras and thus proceed with the test. If they can't get power back to those cameras, it sounds like they will not be able to proceed, but they haven't actually said that. That's just me deducing based on the announcements that they have provided us. So that is gotcha. the current state of things. Um, and just really quick, I, I was able to listen as you guys were starting up, um, and, and I see everybody's generosity on stream, uh, helping me out with the gas money and just helping out in general. Thank you so much. Um, I, I won't I won't get too far into it, but I had some uh, personal things happen on uh, Monday, and so it was quite an ordeal to get here on time. And uh, I, you know, you know me, I wouldn't miss rockets for the world. So thank you everyone for the help. It really means the world. Yeah, Jack, thank you so much. I mean, I know you definitely burnt the midnight oil to get out there safely. So thank you so much for for rolling out and bringing us this feed so we can sit here and talk about SRBs for three hours. Oh, geez. Um, oh, although I do like oh, that Tim Min is saying that I'm hearing an update. Oh, they're yeah, gonna, go ahead. They're going to go without the cameras, and they're waiting for the FAA to extend their clearance. So that's what we're waiting on now. They're going to go without the cameras. Ah, okay. okay. There we go. So, Jack, uh, as, as soon as you get a T-Zero, let us know. We'll be standing by for a, a T-Zero there. 
Yeah, they said something about uh, 15 minutes from now they expect to be back in business. So I think right now basically they're talking to the FAA and getting the uh, the hazard area or, or the TFR or what have you uh, dealt with, and then they, we will continue on into the uh, into the test. So that's where we are at. Let's everyone. Gotcha. Uh, Everyone in chat, give me an F for my high-speed camera. I set a 4K 120 frame a second camera as a remote, and it has now rolled out. The memory card that I bought is too small, and I should have taken Joe Barnard's advice. I think Joe Joe Barnard of of BPS Space Excellency, if I may say so, um, so good. He recently tweeted, I don't know, sometime in the last month, like, something along the lines of he can't stress enough that you, as a content creator, you should buy the largest fastest memory cards you can uh and boy did i learn that lesson today but is what it is um oh well i'll I'll have to get it on the next one good deal it's a good uh, a good first experience out there jack and you got a lot of f's in chat let's put it that way more f's than likes right now actually i think (gasps) so how do we fix that good that's not good (laughs) chat you know what to do hit that like button All right. So again, the quick update there from Jack, y'all, if you're wondering, it looks like they are going to try to go ahead with the test. Um, They had a little bit of ground equipment, not related to the booster, but related with some of the sensing and the recording equipment, I guess, cameras, it sounded like. And they're going to try to keep going forwards with the test, but they're waiting on a new T0. They're trying to get the FAA, I believe, to extend their clearance is what Jack was saying there. So not done yet. Still possible that they'll test the booster here today. That's what they're trying to do. And we're going to hang out and continue to talk about stuff with you in the meantime. So we'll keep reading Super Chats. We'll keep answering questions. And uh, Chris and Chris, do we have some more questions? We do. Um, For those of you who have joined us since we started the stream, uh, Chris, I want to go back to a question we're getting a little bit in in chat quite a bit. And if you have more questions, please tag us at NASA Spaceflight in chat and send us your question. Um, I I, I know some of you are probably going, but I asked my question 40 minutes ago. I know it's in the queue. I promise you. Um, Like, or one very similar to it is in the queue. We always get way more questions than we can do, but please keep asking them. Please, please, please. But Chris, a good question here from Mike Hancock. What kind of infrastructure does it take to keep an SLS solid rocket booster on the ground while it's firing? (laughs) Okay, you first of all see those two supports in the middle of the booster. They hold it steady along the horizontal because of the vibrations that can happen when the ignition occurs. But if you see the big brownish block to the the left-hand side... It's attached to that, but also that block goes down about 100 meters into the mountain, and it's basically anchored into the side of the mountain. So that booster will not move at all when it fires up. Anything less than that kind of support, and it would be jiggling over the place and probably would go flying halfway down past Utah on the way to California. So that's why it's all anchored down, but it is something they've learned over time because that second support structure in the middle is a new addition. Uh, I think from about four tests ago, and they were evaluating why they needed another one. And that's basically because of the other vibrations they get during ignition. But yes, it's very much anchored down. That's the correct terminology for it. I just got an like update you said. on the net. Uh, it sounds like same was what we just said. They are out of FAA approval. They need to get FAA approval to extend their TFR or, or NOTAM or whatever it is. Um, so they are currently working with the FAA, and they stated... Uh, if they are unable to get an extension to the window, then they will scrub for the day. But we are currently, uh, they are currently talking to the FAA, and we will see what happens next. And I will update you as we hear more. Um, is it? No, I'm not even. No, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. <laughs> you can't say is it, and then say you're not going to say it, Jack. Like, at least type it. Is in the it back was, okay, okay. Is so it, at is least it tell bad? us. Yeah. Like, is yeah. it is it bad to hope for a scrub so I can reset my video no. remote with a larger no. memory card? Uh, Gosh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I mean, the test needs to get done. It's important science and it's important for Artemis. So obviously, I really don't actually hope for a scrub. But what's this small five percent of my brain is like, please, please, please. But really, let's get this test done. Let's get the data and let's uh, move on towards the moon. I mean, I don't, I I feel you there, Jack. Uh, One of the things we haven't told chat yet is that we have one of our robotic cameras very close to the booster. 
but we will not be planning on using it. It's sort of an experimental thing for us today. We are not going to be using that robotic camera that is very, I'm going to put this like in quotes, very close to the booster. We, like I'm a little worried about the camera. Go ahead. Can Jack. we show a screenshot or something from earlier to illustrate how close it is? Or do we want to save that for a time in the future when we can blow everyone's minds? I let me think about that. Let me think about that. But uh, there is a possibility that based on data we gathered today, we might use that air quotes very close in camera uh, if they actually do this test tomorrow. So always right. want the test to happen. We want the program to go forwards and uh, we will take any thing that lends in our favor that we can get. We'll see here. Jack, how's Indeed. the weather? It's, it looks like it's gotten dark out there. Um, there like, are some dark clouds rolling over uh, the site right now. You know, some rain clouds. Um, I, I, no rain happening. We're in a desert. Uh, but yeah, I'm. I am wondering, even if they do get FAA approval, how the weather will play into into things. Um, maybe, maybe, and this is me speculating. Uh, maybe they do get FAA approval, but it takes so long that the weather turns sour. Oh, change your charge battery. Working on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyways, y'all, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with us. In the meantime, you can go to nasaspaceflight.com and check out this very informative article. <laughs> Remember which, we... <laughs> which, Das, I have a corresponding question that this article can answer. <laughs> oh, go ahead. What's your question that we're going to focus on this article for a brief time? Yes, indeed. Um, there was a question here about um, they have already test fired five segment solid rocket boosters. So what could this test be testing? Which is a fantastic question. Um, so just because you've already fired the rocket booster, this is how they maintain quality control. So this is how they make sure that their uh, build processes for the actual boosters like right there that are flanking the SLS core stage and holding it to the ML as DOS scrolls down on here. Right there. This is how this is how we make sure that those boosters are going to work as they are intended to work. Uh, these tests are also used to qualify other particular components, new additions to the boosters. So, for example, today, this is the qualification, the final qualification firing we understand for a new motor ignition system, the pyrotechnic that actually ignites the solid propellant inside the booster. Pause right there, Doss. Oh, we're, okay, um, right, right here. Yep, right there, right there. Okay. On the, on the diagram thing, right? On the diagram, yes. Got it. Because the other thing that we are starting to qualify today, too, is part of the new thrust vector control system. So if you hover over the nozzle there, DOS, okay. um, yeah, so the thing that moves that nozzle is all hydraulics right now. And that is a holdover from the shuttle era. And what they are going to transition to, to the Bole boosters, which is why I wanted to, you to freeze right there, because that is the Bole booster, Booster Obsolescence Life Extension Design is what that stands for. Um, and, but, and they are going to switch from hydraulics to much more effective electric thrust vector control systems. So batteries and everything like that. And this is the first part of the test of the new thrust vector control system that moves the nozzle to head toward that electric thrust vector control system, which will debut on Artemis 9. Um, in addition to that, they are also testing a nozzle ablative liner. So basically that is a... Fancy way of saying the way you cool the nozzle and prevent it from melting from the from the heat and exhaust that's coming out the back end of that. So that is the test for today, and that is why we are firing this five segment solid rocket booster. And by we, I of course mean Northrop Grumman because Jack rolled out there to bring it. So I'm going to say we. It's the royal we because we we all feel a connection to spaceflight, right? Like that's that's more it. Nice. Hey, wait. Down in the article, this is what we yep. were talking about earlier, the, the weather seal plug blowing out the back of the thing, right? Yes. That's what I wanted to get high-speed video of. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, speaking of, we have an update. They did get approval from the FAA to have an extension. They are good until 2.30 local, which is an hour extension. And they're going to uh, get all their crew back in their original positions and uh, recycle the clock to T minus 15. So clock hasn't recycled yet, but when it does, it will be T minus 15, and they will proceed with the test, despite losing the camera bank, and uh, now with uh, additional FAA approval. So that's where we are at. I will let you know when we are recycled to T minus 15. 
Gotcha. And Jack, real quick, check your camera again. I do not have your camera feed coming into the encoder. Thanks. Um, but but there you have it. So uh, I think the big takeaway there, FAA extension for another 50 minutes. So uh, another 50 minutes available in today's test window for this SLS solid rocket booster. Gotcha. All, All right. right. Yeah. Chris, keep going. <laughs> All right. I'm going yeah. to work with Jack on his camera. Y'all keep doing some questions. I just Sound. like the idea of the FAA getting a phone call from Northrop Grumman saying, and I'll put on hold music. Press one for your window extension. <laughs> Press two for range weather. <laughs> exactly. Press three to say we don't have the most recent information and you'll make the decision yourself. Yeah. Wait, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chris, here's Camera a good question back. for you. Um, uh, are there any visual indicators as a solid rocket booster proceeds through a countdown? Not really, because I've watched quite a few of them. And it, it, I, you do have to go on the audio cues of these things, because once they fire up, they are like milliseconds before you start seeing it fire up. It really is down to sirens, the countdown itself. You'll hear the um, APU kind of igniter uh, actually spin up as well, but you don't visually see anything. That's the key thing I'm trying to find from from previous tests, you don't really see a visual indication of a test coming. So the first thing you will see visually is fire coming out the end. Nice. Exactly. T minus no <laughs> 20 vent or there's no like condensation around it or anything no, like that. Really it's isn't. the beauty of the SRB. Yep. Yeah. If your eyes are really good, you have about a three millisecond uh, advantage over the rest of us, but that's it. <laughs> Uh, so here's a good question from Patrick, who's asking, are they going to gimbal the nozzle of the booster during today's test? I think yes. they will be. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They, they, the fun thing about the Solid Rocket Boosters is when you see the shuttle roll program, and you'll see the roll program with SLS as well, when that roll takes place, it's not just the RS-25s that are gimbling with their TVCs. Sorry, cl sorry. clock is ticking. T minus 14 minutes, 50 seconds. Woo! Oh, nice. All right. That's Four good news. 14 minutes, 50 seconds would put it at uh, 56, I guess. 56, One... yeah. 156 Mountain, I think. All right. 156 Mountain Time. Woof. So there you go. Everyone who's asking for the time, 156 Mountain Time is when we are expecting the test firing now. 14 minutes, roughly. Oi, oi, oi. So yeah, the uh... TVC on the actual... Thr it's amazing because the actual thruster... The aft skirt, you'll see the nozzle right in the far left, right hand side of the booster. You see that little almost cone sticking out. That actually moves as well. And that is the main steering mechanism for the first stage of flight for a shuttle and for SLS. And I've seen the inside of that skirt ring. It's got the avionics in there, but it's also got these massive piston arms. And the massive piston arms are on hydraulics and they move up and down. And that is what steers the nozzle. And that is directing the thrust of what's coming out of that booster in a direction it wants to move the actual whole stack with. And the two boosters will work together to make sure the steering is correct at the same time. And that's what the roll program is. That's how it rolls. You know and, something? And I, go, Chris, go. Oh, oh, I was just going to say, and fun fact, the SRBs are actually going to have a lot more responsibility for that on SLS than they did over shuttle because instead of those engines being out uh, an asymmetrical to the thrust line on shuttle, which gave the main engines a lot more roll and maneuverability control of the vehicle. Now that it's all in line with SLS, it's the boosters that are going to be more responsible for the overall percentage of roll and pitch control of the vehicle during first stage flight. Right. Chris, I was going to say it is refreshing to have a live stream where we're covering something that's well known and well documented from many years of use. Because it's not like, yeah, it's, I don't know, is there even enter on? Was that an igniter test? I don't know. What just happened? What is, is the frost ring forming? Like, instead of all the normal stuff we get from SpaceX, where it's very open, we get to see what's going on, but they don't release any information about test plans or how exactly things work or, or all that sort of thing. It's refreshing to be here looking at a proven piece of technology that we know works and be able to explain how it works and what goes on and all the little intricacies of it. It's a far cry from our normal uh, tank watching where it's like, I don't know, that looks like frost to me. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, if we're seeing frost here, something's gone wrong. Like, <laughs> something's <yeah. laughs> seriously gone wrong, right. Uh, but here's, here's a good question, too, um, from Odebear, who's asking, um, 
Uh, oh, well, uh, yeah, who's asking, uh, do you think the proposed launch dates for Artemis 1 are realistic? Thinking about flying down to KSC from Germany. Oh, there's a couple dates in the mix I, in there. Yeah, so here's here's what I would say for that. Um, they were very clear yesterday that August 28th, September 3rd, or se- September 2nd and September 5th are the penciled-in dates they have reserved on the range and are currently working toward. They very specifically stopped short of calling it the official launch target. Um, and I think that's important for a couple of different reasons. One, there are still things as they work through this sort of closeout with the flight termination system that, you know, that's a first time maneuver for them with SLS. So that might take a little longer. You know, there are things that could still get them in the VAB that just might take a little bit longer and, and prevent getting out to the pad in enough time to make August 29th. So I, if you want to plan it and you can afford it, I would almost recommend refundable tickets at this point. I know those are more expensive, but trying to be honest with you, like it's not an actual launch date. It's just that is the target that looks like it might be feasible at this point. Gotcha. And I, and I know that's frustrating. I really know that's frustrating for those of you trying to plan to be here for this, but that that is the reality of, of where we are right now on July 21st. Yes, Chris, but look on the bright side. If the, if you do oh, arrive God. in Florida at the Kennedy Space Center and there's no launch happening, you just timed it badly. There's plenty of fun things to do there, not least well, the Kennedy Space Center Visit Center, because you go and see Atlantis. So yeah, that's, well, that's, well, that's well, been that my thought. It. Yeah, the odds on. that a Falcon 9 will go off the week you're here are pretty they, high yeah, at this point. Like, like, yeah, like, Come on, let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but 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 that's the reality for for Artemis. But but I also want to say the fact that we have that right now. A about... TBC wiggle test is starting in five seconds. I don't know that we'll be able to see anything from here, but look at the nozzle. Wiggle, wiggle. Also, two minus ten minutes. T minus ten minutes. All right, thanks, Jack. Jack, are those are those announcements coming over the intercom or? Yep, intercom. Okay, is there a lot of other noise, or should we try to listen into that? You can try and listen in. I specifically am like the furthest away from everybody else that it could possibly get, so that we don't have chatter from employees and whatnot. So right. there may give be it a try. Wind. We'll listen in real quick. Let's see. I don't know if you heard it, ambient. but the, the wiggle test was successful. But the, the wiggle test yeah, was okay. Successful. Oh, and Jack, when we do that, we're going to get you on a little bit of an uh, echo there. Um, as we listen for that audio, Pink Mouse asking a good question. How are the SRBs ignited? Pyrotechnic charges? Correct. T minus. Question nine asked. Minutes. We are in a scheduled hold for final system checks. So I heard nine minutes scheduled hold for checks. Yeah, can y'all hear that okay? Like, tell me in chat if y'all can hear that okay, and we'll see if we can't get some of our updates from there now that we're at T minus nine minutes was that last one. Yeah, chat saying they can hear it. Okay, good, good, good. All right. Good. We'll keep trying to answer some questions here, y'all, but we'll try to stop talking if we hear something over that. Again, that's, that's really difficult to do, um, but we'll try to listen in for those official updates because we're now less than nine minutes from yeah. this test of Flight Sport but Booster 2. Go I ahead. swear I heard them say nine minutes and holding for checks. Yeah, nine minutes and holding, scheduled hold, doing yeah, some checks. Nine minutes and holding, holding. scheduled okay, hold. Jack. Okay, All good. Right. So scheduled. That means it's good. That means it's good. So not a problem. So yes. So that gives us time to keep going with questions. Good, good, good. <laughs> um. Oh, here's a good question from Dog Kraus, uh, Chris. Um, if there happened to be an anomaly today, does that put SLS One's launch at risk? I would say yes. Yeah. I, I think there's no way they're going to take chances with boosters, not yeah. for SLS, because. Unlike, as we were referencing earlier with the Starship testing, they can afford to lose vehicles because they push them to the limits and they have their vehicles replacements just down the road, down Highway 4. With the SRBs, they've got limited amounts and they've obviously got two attached to the side of Artemis 1's vehicle. 
if they have an anomaly today, there could easily be commonality. And there is no way they're going to risk the commonality going wrong with the first launch of SLS because if they lose that launch, unlike Starship, it's not a few weeks until they roll out the next vehicle. It's a few years, and then with modifications. So that would be bad. This is probably why the test is timed now because they want to get this qualification out of the way now before the launch of Artemis 1. So yeah, anomaly during this one, a serious one, obviously, would be bad. Yeah, and, and, and Jack, because uh, I, I think I would caveat that just a little bit for my answer, which, yes, an anomaly right now would be bad. Yes, very much so. Um, and, and would honestly be shocking given the history of these boosters. Um, but I think it would depend a little bit on what the failure point origination was. Like, if it was something with the new ablative coating on the nozzle that caused the nozzle to let loose, which led to the destruction of the booster, well, that new nozzle ablator isn't on the boosters for Artemis 1. So if that was the ultimate cause of it, they might say, yeah, totally, the boosters for SLS-1 are fine, go, because the change we were testing that failed isn't on those boosters. But overall, I think there would inevitably be a delay just because you would have to have the time to do that root cause it evaluation on and Chris, what actually did, happened. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I didn't a nozzle go, let go on an Omega test launch? Yes, it did. It was a test hot oh. fire, and it wasn't commonality with the SLS boosters. That's why they weren't panicking about SLS, but exactly. they were looking at changes for Omega. And of course, Omega was then cancelled. But yeah, I remember that one. The nozzle let go, literally. It was quite dramatic, and they didn't know what to say on the live stream. They were like, mm, no little test, that's complete, when it was completely on fire. So yeah, that was not good. <laughs> when it was completely on fire, exactly. <laughs> Uh, I asked uh, Jack to back off the camera. The wind is picking up a little bit here. I don't believe the wind is a constraint for this test, but the wind is picking up a little bit, and that long lens he's toting was getting a little bit of shake, so we backed it off a little bit. You'll get uh, the time will be T minus nine by. minutes. Sounds like they're picking up the count again. Which will answer Mark. Rebecca. T minus nine minutes of counting. All right, so that Alrighty. puts us at 201, right? Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Sorry, Doss. There's a little bit of a delay, delay not trying to interrupt you at all there. <laughs> all good. Uh, but yeah, that should put us at 201 p.m. Mountain Time for a firing. Um, and that answers Rebecca and Johan's questions. And Johan, we don't have a countdown clock because it keeps changing and there are built-in right. holds in here. Uh, and Northrop does not provide us a, like, here are when the built-in holds are going to be. So it's a little bit hard for us to put an accurate countdown clock up there. So that's why we're calling it out for you there um good question here from mars endeavor how high can an srb fly well when it's attached to sls and a shuttle it flies to about 47 kilometers is when it separates um from the stack and it apogees at around 60 to 65 kilometers before coming back down to the ocean um if you shot it straight up i don't know how far it could go because we've never done that before um, but when you aim it on the parabolic course, they, 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 yeah, separation at 47 kilometers, peaking at between 60 and 65, depending on the flight trajectory. Uh, good question here from Philip saying, one of the past SRB tests cooled the booster down before firing it. Will this one be doing the same? Answer is no. This one is an ambient temperature test. So whatever the propellant has naturally risen to out in the Utah environment is what they are testing it at. Um, they did not cool this one down, but that is on purpose because they do tend to test both on the hot end of the temperature spectrum and the low end of the temperature spectrum to validate overall booster design across its overall performance envelope in temperatures. Uh, oh, here's a good question, uh, Das. I don't know if we can figure this out from the map. Sure. Probably. John is wondering, how close is Jack's camera to the booster for today? Uh, Jack or Jack's camera? There are two different Both. things there. <laughs> Let's see. I will tell you that I believe Jack is about just over a mile from the booster, maybe a mile and a quarter from the booster. And Jack has cameras set well less than 500 feet from the booster. How's that? Does that answer the question? That answers the question. I like that. Yeah. So uh, uh. people over a mile and cameras less than 500 feet. Indeed. The irony about this view as well is when this thing fires up, the plume itself will reach far further than what we're seeing right in this view. So they're talking about scroll, uh, panning back and looking, zooming back, I should say, 
this is where you want to be, actually, because look at that concave in the actual mountainside there. That is from previous tests. Yep. Yep. Uh, and a good question here from Carter saying, I live about 40 miles away. Six Will minutes. I be able to hear it? Six minutes to go. And Carter, the answer is yes. From 40 miles away, you definitely should be able to hear this. Um, it, it should come about five-ish minutes after the firing and should be a pretty sustained rumble for a few minutes for you. Uh, Mars actually also asking, uh, how long does it take to make an SLS SRB? It takes about a year to produce the set of them, um, more or less, and then they can stay in storage for quite some time. Uh, the flight set for Artemis 1 was cast back in like 2013, 2014, um, and, and they can stay in storage for quite a long time. Um, in fact, uh, last year when they launched, when Northrop Grumman launched an all-solid rocket vehicle called the Minotaur 4, those propellant segments had been sitting in storage for more than 30 years at that point. Uh, so solid segments can really be kept. Uh, Cosmozoid saying, uh, can SRBs efficiently be used in space? Has there ever been plans for a solid upper stage? Yes to both. They can be used efficiently in space. In fact, a lot of the kick stages for the Voyager and interplanetary missions have been solid propellant star 3848 upper stages from Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin. Um, so they can absolutely be used effectively in vacuum. And uh, the Minotaur 4 that we just talked about has a solid upper stage, as does the Pegasus rocket as well so yes upper stages are used for solid vehicles um and the antares rocket actually has a liquid fueled first stage and a solid fueled second stage an upper stage so uh yes solids can definitely be used for those as well trying to speed around some questions here uh mike rin asking uh what percentage of the boosters is throttled back at max q uh so they throttle back to about 70 percent of rate of performance um, is what you can throttle back the the solids for as they go through max Q for the shuttle and for SLS. Um, and yes, four the minutes. overall four minutes. And yes, the overall density of the altitude does affect all of that um, uh, based on the rocket for that. So yeah, the SLS boosters are tailored to SLS in that regard over what the shuttle would have done in that regard. Uh, flawed perspective saying here's five Canadian dollars for the VHS DVD fund for fifth element watching. I think we're developing a theme here on what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, and the I poll was go for firing. We are told. So they did poll for firing and they pulled go for the firing here in less than four minutes now. Yeah. Chris, I'm going to bring up that audio so we can hear. Please do. Things like that. Y'all, with four minutes before the test of the SLS Flight Support Booster 2 here, we're going to pause the questions in Super Chats for just yep. a second and listen in on their count, whatever countdown net we're getting over the PA system there with Jack. T minus three minutes. Low speed data operators begin recording. High speed data operators at T minus 60 seconds begin recording and report at that time. All low speed data systems are recording. And just a quick reminder here, we are also going to use some of NASA's cameras, but because of the way they provide them to us, they are not going to be in exact sync with our camera. Our camera, you'll see it first there, and you may see a little bit of weirdness when we swap over to NASA cameras that will be delayed pretty significantly behind our own. I assume we're going to get a countdown over the PA system there, and as we hear it, it should match with our video coming in over Jack's remote. T minus two minutes. There's the two minute call. And 90 seconds. T minus 80 seconds. Test control coordinator, stand by to commit the motor. Standing by. T 
minus 70 seconds. Commit the motor. Sounds like we're, we're going to get all the countdowns motor here, y'all. We're just going to let it go, Chris and Chris. T minus 60 seconds. All I got to say is get ready, guys. This is impressive. Look at the sirens going off. TVC is go for static test. T minus 40 seconds. T minus 30 seconds. If you haven't seen one of these, y'all, you're in for a treat. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Wait for the sound. Jack's feed there. Uh, briefly stand by. Uh, not a problem with Jack, it's just that we may have lost Jack's feed. But you can definitely see that SRB just about a minute and a half into its overall two minute firing there. You heard that sound. And a lot of you are probably going, wait, 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 but I've seen other solid rockets. Like the flame changes. I'm used to the flame changing because of atmospheric pressure. This is what it would actually look like if they just fired it on the ground continuously. A lot of the visual changes we see are due to that atmospheric uh, pressure change and, and lack of oxygen as they make sense. There's the sound again. Yeah, we're working on getting it back. I can explain what happened. It's still going, y'all. We're approaching tail off. There we go, tail off. And so we're hearing audio in real time, and there's the actual video from NASA, a little bit delayed. Yeah, and there is the full burnout. So that is what burnout would be on the solid. And we're about to see a little robotic arm slam itself into that opening. There it goes right now. That is that CO2 quencher. It is going to extinguish the rest of the burn to preserve the state of the booster for inspections. Uh, at this point. So a lot of you are asking, how do you safe a solid rocket? How do you safe a solid rocket? This is how you safe it after the test firing. Um, the way you safe a solid rocket booster before you fire it is just not fire the igniter. Um, and I know that sounds weird, but that's how you safe it. Um, you just prevent the igniter from firing. And that's how you safe a, a fueled solid rocket. And this is how you safe an empty burned solid rocket. But that was an incredible test. What did you think about that, chat? Like, come on, you, you, you all had to have feelings about that. I mean, my goodness. I, I, I wish we had Jack on comms because I want to hear his reaction to feeling that in his chest, which I know he did. Yeah. <laughs> it's likely that uh, Jack doesn't have enough upload bandwidth right now uh, to talk to us. What happens is a test like that starts and everybody takes pictures of the start and then they all rush to upload it in the middle of the test. And uh, the cellular network out there took a serious hit, which is why we lost Jack. It wasn't anything to do with Jack's safety or anything like that. It was literally just uh, the <laughs> There's still stuff falling. 
You see the stuff yeah. falling on the NASA oh, the particulate there? ash yeah. and everything. Yeah, now falling <laughs> down from the from the air. Yeah, around the booster. Yeah, yeah. So we did uh, we did lose Jack's feet there, but it wasn't anything to do with Jack's safety. It was literally just the uh, cellular connection out there that was sending us his feed. So let's see here. I don't know Jack. Do we have? No, we don't even have Jack on. Comms we don't right even now. have Jack on comms. I don't think. Yeah. Wow. All right. So NASA is going to be talking here, um, leaving me with not much to show you. And what we're going to end up showing you is going to be, let's see here, a test of Starship out there at Starbase right now. S24 is undergoing preps for a test. And since we've finished off the SLS booster test here, it is going to be, there we go. Thank you, Michael. We have some Starship testing that's going to continue on, you'll never guess it, on a complete other stream. So we are continuing to do streams. This stream here is going to go ahead and end, but we are probably minutes away from what's going on with Starship here out at Starbase on another commentary stream. So for now, hey, I know we're shutting it down pretty quickly here. Thanks for all the super chats that came in. Wheelie, Stillwin, Kessie, Yehuda Burger, Musical Wolves, Gene Guerrero, Gina Guerrero, actually. Thank you all for the support. If you're watching, if you're doing everything, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for all the likes, and let's send you over to the Starship stream, just in case that test happens. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you nerds on the Starship stream.